Hey fellow Humvee enthusiasts, um, my name is Ben and I am going to show you guys how I did my 3 inch lift, body lift on my Humvee. It's an 89 uh, M998 that uh, has been the project and it's actually my daily driver. I don't have any other car or vehicle besides it so uh, it needs to be practical and I need to get things done on it and I'm also on a budget. so. This project has been fun, and I just want to show you guys how I did this three inch lift. And I've been getting a lot of questions asked uh, how did you do it? Because I didn't buy a kit, I just did it on my own. And uh, I read a lot, I think it's on Flash Off Road. They have quite a few, they have great articles actually on there. Uh, I recommend anybody, I can maybe try and put a link uh, in the description on this video for that. But they have a ton of info. And so I read all I could online, but there were still some things I saw that were not mentioned that I want to do here and now because I just finished this a couple days ago. Probably only got 50 miles on the truck since I did the lift. But a few things that I didn't see online anywhere that I want you guys to know. And also just some guidelines and pointers because uh, there hasn't been a really thorough video I saw. I'm not saying my work is thorough. No, not at all. But there is some stuff that I need to show while it's still fresh in my head because I'll forget. And also note, I am no pro mechanic. I um, just have projects, I love working on things. And so some of my stuff may not be up to par, but uh, forgive me, sorry you pros out there, I know there are a lot and I'm far from that level. But uh, just trying to do what I can to help. So I'll show you what I did and we'll get started. This up here is the front uh, driver's side bolt. It is the hardest one to do and you can just see the bottom of it and I went with the 8 inch bolts again there's the puck right there and this is the bolt and it comes in you can see the daylight because that's where the hood opens up. Um, it comes in from the top here and then it comes down and you have to I had to cut the bolt to be exact so that you could just get it in there and just get it to fit you can barely see that all, but that was a harder one to get out because uh, it's hard to get tools in here, the main problem. Getting a wrench and all was difficult, but it can be done. And you have to hide the trim it so just enough to fit so you can get it past all this stuff because it's got to come in from the top. This bolt's got to come in from up here and drop down because obviously the frame rail's here, so you can't put it up from underneath. And if you get it, just trim it just enough, as much as you can, it will fit in here you'll be able to get that one in. All right, so as you can see here, these are the three inch lift pucks. They have a 5 8 diameter hole in them to accommodate a 5 8 diameter bolt uh, that is grade eight. And I decided to go with the uh, an eight inch long version. Cause All right, onto the passenger side bolt. This is that one, if I can get the camera to focus. There, you can see it, and that one just drops in from above. Easy peasy, I left it as an eight inch uh, bolt, and you can see how much I have left over. I have more than an inch here. So you could trim this, you know, and run seven inch bolts. Uh, that's what the guys, I believe now, after I re-researched it, I think seven inch was the correct length. Um, so maybe you wanna do that. This is the, uh, the four rear uh, pucks. So this one here by the gas filler. Easy to get to, easy to do. This one back here uh, at the rear, easy to do as well. This one here, sorry, let me adjust this. This one here, easy to do. And then this one right in here again. Another easy one to uh, get to and do so. Those are not too hard to do, just very stiff and take quite a bit of work to break them free and undo them. I had some giant breaker bars because my truck wasn't rusted, but they just had this heavy duty undercoating on all the threads. It was just, took a lot of muscle to break those all free. My impact gun couldn't do it. So the big breaker bars, leverage, that's what did it. This is the front lifts blocks for the hood. So I was confused for a while on do you need to 
like change this sort of stuff. I didn't, just wasn't getting it. You need to change this stuff? No. Those are fine. You can leave them. Nothing has to be changed there. But this is what has to be changed so the hood fits. So whatever lift you go, these are three inches, both of them, three inch blocks. And I just drilled the new holes, went to the hardware store and got the same bolts that I had that came off of it, which were a pain. They were really rusted. They were very hard to get off. But I was able to get them off um, with a torch and uh, um, just heat them up. And then the heat was penetrating. I was able to get them free. But take these to the hardware store, get ones that are three, inch, three inches longer, and drill some holes in these blocks to fit them. And uh, that's what you can do. I took, I just um, laminated up some synthetic uh, decking. Uh, cut it square so it's a clean block after it was laminated so it's nice solid block drill the holes through it and then bolt it up and that you can take these little hinges out these pins slide the hinges out I had a jack under here with the hood down and I jacked up the front of the hood so it lifted it up slid these slid took the bolts out put the new blocks in slid it down bolted it up and that worked great so I spray painted them black I have a brush guard that I run, like a, a H1 Hummer brush guard that I run up here, and it bolts into these here, like this, but um, this plate unbolts. But since I have lifted it, the brush guard is only gonna come up to, you know, this part far on the lights. You'll see some guys haven't done, haven't raised their, their brush guard to meet the lift, and it, I think it looks funny, so I have it off until I'm ready for that and basically all I'm going to do is, it's a very light little tube frame brush guard. I'm going to weld on some plates here. It'll actually hide the lift blocks for the hood and it'll give me something because this needs to be basically three inches higher. So something, you know, I may try to use that hole at maybe close enough and then drill a new hole through this plate, which won't be that sturdy, but um, I'll have it bolted in tight with this one and maybe I'll see what I can do to make it stronger and bolt the brush guard, raise it up. So that's the plan for that up there. All right, the fuel tank uh, drop down was a confusing thing that I wasn't sure about how to, how to do correctly. And uh, you know, the straps and cutting them, lengthening them, buying straps, um, it was all, I just wasn't sure what to do and you couldn't really buy just the straps, I felt, and so I didn't see that in kits online, and the kits were quite expensive, so that's why I did it this way. But anyway, so what I did, if you notice the problem, the rear drive shaft is, you know, the tank has a cutout here, top and bottom, for this drive shaft. So it's got to stay exactly lined up with the shaft, but the tank is attached to the body. So doing a three inch lift up will move this into contact with the drive shaft and that would be a terrible thing because you'd rub a hole through the tank and it'd be a disaster. It wouldn't get far. Um, so you have to lower the tank the three inches that you go up or two inches, whatever you know works. So I noticed that, um, I didn't notice, the tank straps were not going to work. So I did what I did read someone on Steel Soldiers did and they added bolts. So you can't really see anything in here because it's really crammed. You can barely see. Let me adjust the ISO on this. Crank this Sony up. There. You can see the top of my bolt. I got some eight inch bolts. I forgot the diameter of them. I don't know if it's quarter inch or something, but they're running from the top here, the tab where the, the, the strap used to bolt to. And it drops all the way down, down to here and it's now going in like that. So that allowed it to drop down. Of course, the angle of your straps is gonna change. So I pulled the strap out. It unhooks on this side. If you can't, you can't really see, yeah, you can. It, it unhooks when you lo lo loosen it up. You can take it, put it in the vise, and I bent it with a hammer tapping on it so that it will fit this new angle like this. And uh, I did the same for the front. And I have a bolt here now, which let the front drop down. And I changed the bends on the straps here so it would accommodate the new angle because they're meant to fit, you know, this is supposed to be.
closed it, this gap so it'll be the bend was you know different much more different so I rebent it so it'll fit um, got some locking bolts here so that it will not back itself out and I will keep checking on that and making sure it does not because that would be horrible if that did and I want to be responsible so I'll keep an eye on those while I break this whole truck in this new system that I got on it and uh, what I did notice though what these straps with the bolt system does is it does let the tank have more wobble like this because these flat straps are better I believe obviously OEM a better idea uh, but um, I didn't I wasn't too confident on my welding abilities to cut these and lengthen it three inches which if you did if you're good good at welding or have a buddy that's probably the best way to go or just buy them but again if you're on a budget you can use the bolts bring it down you have a wobbling issue then because it's got play because the bolts can pivot in the holes um, so what I did is I added these uh, 200 pound each um, heavy duty zip tie straps around the frame just to hold it up tight against that frame which it which it really always was it was a really tight gap here so this just brings it in tight like that and I have two here and two in the front you can see them up here and so 800 pounds of zip ties rated pound of zip ties just just holding it off to the side it wasn't much just a little bit of a wobble that it had but this way if you're in gravel or off-road and stuff it will just not um, start to want to drift and make uh, periodic contact with this now now that it's strapped in tight that's solid um, also fuel in the tank because I had it pretty much empty that's a good point when you're doing this job have the run the tank down to almost nothing and then do it so it's easier to move around and you can use a knee even and lift it up while you're adjusting the bolts and all that it just makes it easier but I, I had a jack uh, with a piece of lumber here and just was able to go up and down with it to get it right where I wanted it and bolt it up and play around with it because it will take some of that and that's the nice thing about using bolts is if your measurements are just quite not right on the tabs you have to cut and re-weld of course but the bolts you can adjust bring it down further or tighten it up bring it up further so there is some of that which is nice I do I did like that idea and I will probably do something better than these 200 pound zip ties um, I may get some straps but I don't want to chafe into the tank so I may have a, a rubber pad that goes around them and some solid metal straps or something but this is my daily driver so I needed to get it back on the road safely I'm keeping an eye on these and making sure that's okay um, also with the tank you have a vent line up here that runs up to the uh, gas filler all the way up in there and so that vent line um, it comes through a hole up here I don't know if I can get you to see it there you go so there's a hole there that hole is where this vent line runs through and now it's dropped down it, it couldn't quite make it this very very stiff hose um, not flexible it's like a hard plastic hose and it's a pain to get these off but they will come off so I decided to run it underneath this um, support for body body brace and I just have I had to cut it and extend it so it could make that it may be able to on your own if you can but you won't be able to get the fitting through the hole so I just had to cut mine I got a pipe cutter out and just clipped it and then I added a inline filter because it's what I had around the house here that fit the diameter properly of the hose and that uh, if I can get the camera to focus on it that allowed me to just add an extension um, if you get a piece of pipe or something that's more proper that'd be better again forgive me guys this is just what I had right around the shop with me and uh, an inline filter uh, just to uh, make that extension that I, that I needed because I did have to cut a little bit out and um, it to get it lowered so forgive me but these are the kind of the temporary solutions just showing you what you'll have to do um, if, if you go through this stuff all right so this is another challenging part of the whole job is the tank fill changes I may have a still picture I can add in uh, to show you what happens but obviously the fill or pipe is steel and it just comes and runs straight into the uh, tank but now that the tank 
is lower, the body's higher, it doesn't work because it goes like this. You need like a Z hose basically. So I searched and searched, it's two inch, it's a two inch hose. I searched and searched to find what would work. Finally found this pipe from, um, this hose from um, O'Reilly, I believe. And uh, I can try and find that number, but really it's not perfect. So it touches still a little bit of the frame right there. And uh, it's a little bit squeezed. It has an elbow and it comes up and then goes like this, but it didn't quite have enough um, because it is quite close. I mean, the plastic ends like pretty close there and it needs to come abruptly up and then turn this way to come out. So it does touch, um, does push a little bit in on it. It fill, I went, filled it up with diesel and it worked fine. So it did work, but I had to cut this pipe as well. A lot of guys are recommending cutting this pipe so it comes back so you can have a hose that has some, some give because otherwise the metal pipe comes right, I cut about eight inches off of it. It comes right up to here and it's so abrupt, it's hard to find anything that'll work. So I cut the pipe back a bit, added this hose and that um, works now. Uh, clamped it up, everything works. I had to remove, pull this out, it wasn't that much work. Pull this out, cut it, put it back in, fit the new hose, which is kind of a pain to get this one on here, but it's, everything's tight. But I was able to get it all in there and you could do it too. Also, another thing to remember guys, is there's a, some fuel lines running from the tank. Ooh, let me crank this. Running from the tank here. And they are running along here, up here. Some fuel lines you're gonna to need to unbolt those because they're bolted to the body and the and uh the rest of this and uh, one more up i believe up here you're gonna to want to unbolt these uh those are also something that's connected to the body and uh the other end's connected to the frame so be careful with those and unbolt them i never had any issues with my electricals wires cables they all were okay so in here on the cab I had to cut out, uh, I believe it wasn't, oh, I'm sorry guys, I don't have anything to show here, but it was like, maybe two, maybe an inch and a half, I had to cut down on this, but you'll just see as you're lifting, you see, oh, I gotta cut, you just make some little cuts, basically cut a V into this, and lowered it down, uh, the OEM one on my Humvee didn't have a slot, to replace so I had to clip it and rip it out and it was the rubber was falling apart anyways I reused this little bushing that was on it so that, that you need that so it has your steering uh, shaft can turn freely and I bought a new one from Hummer parts guy I think it was like 20 bucks something uh, for this new one and it has a, a gap here so that it can um, sorry about the focusing so that it can be split and go over the new one and fill up this gap nicely and I added a little bit of um, um, like a sound deadener that tar kind of like foil back stuff here to just cover the gap because man it was barely any gap above here barely any gap really uh, so I just add this little piece got three bolt holes in on this uh, rubber piece so it holds it in this fourth one would have been uh, in the gap so you could if you're good at riveting and cutting, cut a little aluminum piece, rivet it in here. Then you could put, put this last bolt hole, but I just did this little bit of um, uh, tar stuff, sound deadener kind of stuff that sticks well and sealed up that little maybe quarter inch of a gap I had. All right, another thing to remember when you're doing the lift, run around and always check stuff as you're jacking it up so you don't tear anything apart. I noticed this is something that wasn't mentioned online that uh, was a uh, stress point was these two fuel hoses. This one was fine, but this heavier, this other one is a heavier one. It was not. Um, and it comes from the fuel filter. Forgive me on knowing, not knowing what exactly these ones are, but it's obviously a diesel line, had diesel fuel coming out of it, but it had torn right here from the lift. And uh, so that's why I had to replace this one and just keep an eye out on these fuel lines um, and keep an eye out for everything listen carefully so you don't break things but that um, uh, is what I had to replace also I like how much space now I have after doing a three inch body lift above the engine I have been adding more insulation and stuff not to let the engine get too hot but just to keep the sound down um, and just 
quiet it up. I also want to do this uh, big of a lift, the three inch one, because if you want to do a come in swap, you got to at least have three inch. So that's kind of why I wanted to at least get to the three inch, because if I ever want to do a swap, I got this part of it done already. So um, it's ready for the engine. If, if I go that route, we'll see. Another area that needs, I think, attention that didn't get attention online was these um, hydraulic lines. These are actually towards for the brake, um, the brake booster, I believe. Um, these go to uh, down to your pump, down to their hydraulic pump, way down there. And these were very tight doing this lift, and no one really mentioned that. So be very aware of these lines. Uh, make sure, if you're doing a two inch, I think you'll be fine. But if you're doing a three inch, you need to watch these lines. One was okay, but I went ahead and replaced the other one. I had a buddy of mine redo it and just give me a few more inches. And I just redid that line. He was able to keep the fittings and everything and just add, uh, I mean, you could probably cut the hose, put a little extension, but I, I like to do it. I try to do some things right, right? So I got this uh, hose redone, added a few more inches so that it would um, no longer be too tight because that was something that I didn't hear online. Uh, maybe you can get by with it. Uh, I think two inch you'll be fine, but a three inch probably just need to replace this one hose, add a little bit more line to it um, so you're safe there. Another thing, guys, is no one ever mentions to unloosen this bolt here. This bolt goes to your your um, brakes here, your brake deal, and it will, when you're lifting the whole truck, it'll hold on to this, and this is attached to the frame, and this is attached to the body, so you got a problem right there. So this needs to be unbolted, and I drilled a new hole and rebolted it here. I got to tighten that up, but this is something that wasn't mentioned, please don't do that because it starts to crack this piece and uh, you don't want to break that. Um, so just slowly lift it and be listening. Have someone, if you have another person, watch, walk around and watch, make sure nothing's tight. Okay, the other thing um, for the lift, and again, I'm not sure on a two inch, you may still have trouble with two inch, uh, but three inch for sure I did. So I, this is another thing that wasn't mentioned online, is the heater core lines. So the heater core is bolted to the body. So that's these, can I, sorry, let me see if I can get you guys to see this. Crank it up a bit. So these are the heater core lines. They go into the body there and the hoses were old and nasty. So, and I was seeing it was, it was tight. Things were not looking good doing the lift, so I stopped, unbolted them all, them there, and these ones here. These are this heater core for your, your heater and your cab. If you want to keep that, which I think you should, if it, if it works, keep everything you can, you know. Don't be lazy and try and do it somewhat right. Like I, like I keep saying, you know, some things I'm doing to what I know how, and maybe I need to do a better job. But this is just kind of what I did and trying to do things as best as I can. So... Don't beat me up too hard, guys. Um, but I replaced these heater core hoses, which were gross, with some new ones, and added some length so that with the lift, they wouldn't be under tension. And I also did is I pulled some of these pipes out and gave them a slight little bit of bends, tweaked them a bit so they would accommodate the lift a little better because they were, they were a bit... Um, uh, tight the, the bends the metal pipe wasn't uh, fitting just right so I had to bend it a couple places um, I believe I bent this one down further like that and I may have done something more here maybe not but um, you'll just see you come to that part um, don't force it I recommend just unbolting it and remember when you're going to unbolt it you're probably going to lose a lot of coolant and not necessarily from this the other thing that i wasn't wasn't mentioned that i came across doing this three inch lift was your expansion tank here for your radiator this hose down here let me go under the truck and show you this hose let me adjust the 
exposure. Oh, forgive me, guys. Here we go. <clears throat> is here. So this hose, which comes to like this uh, radiator. All right, let me get a better angle here. All right, this radiator hose. This is like this main one, main pipe here. But this one um, goes straight up to the expansion tank. And when you do the three inch lift, this gets pulled three inches up. So um, I had, I, I didn't break anything. I didn't force it because I was checking all these things and I realized that was under a lot of tension as I started to do a few inches of lift. So I learned from my mistakes, guys. And so I didn't break anything, thankfully. But I had to basically unbolt these, this clamp and the one up there, or one of them. And uh, fluid, I lost my all my antifreeze because this is down low and it, everything drained out. So just know if you're going to do this lift, you're probably going to need to change your fluid. You'll be changing your fluid because it's all going to pour out. Unless you have some really good plugs you can just throw in here. But if you haven't done it yet, it's a good idea. Uh, change out your coolant. Maybe you want to change your thermostat out to a 180, which I did. I love the 200 temps. I love that. But that's another topic. Anyways, so this is that lower hose. I recommend getting a longer one. It's got some weird bends to it. So I ended up trying to find the right hose. Couldn't find anything correct. So I got a piece of, uh, I mean, I think it's a one inch pipe. Sorry, I don't have these exact numbers from Home Depot that had a had an elbow in it, a, a curve, so I cut it, and it fit just perfect, and it became my extension here on this pipe, which it helped clear the um, AC compressor better, and it also helped clear, because I added AC to this truck, it also helped clear the exhaust down there, but I added a little bit of this heat, um, aluminum heat shroud just around it, because it's still sort of close to the exhaust, and so I don't want it to um, melt anything so I just did that here you can see the shift linkages you'll need to disconnect these so when you do your lift you don't want to have those connected and bend something up I mean maybe it'll pivot and work someone can try it but I didn't want to chance it I heard people say just to disconnect that it's probably the right thing to do and that's what I did and you'll readjust you'll reconnect them when you uh, install it uh, back together and I uh, noticed with mine um, that it just I just put it back stock wherever the adjustments were without the 3 inch I just reconnected it and it, I just put it into drive and it goes um, it's like I can feel a little bit different uh, on it a little bit but everything still is working um, I didn't try 1, 2, and 3 I didn't try those uh, lower settings but I did try, oh, the rooster, anyways, I did try uh, the other ones. I put it into park, and it, I did notice when I go all the way into park, the truck was still rolling a little bit, so I had to pull the parking brake, and like the old days, with the TH400, because I have upgraded this one to a 4L80E, um, so that was part of the uh, uh, one thing I noticed that wasn't right, so I may have to adjust it a little bit, make sure that park pawl um, grabs in and locks the truck yeah, in park so it doesn't roll away on you. I haven't done this, but um, you can uh, may want to add an extension of some sort to meet and seal off against your um, radiator uh, inlet here. Get something longer than this. I remember some guys were talking about using, um, I think on the Facebook group, the uh, landscaping edging plastic as a little bit of a skirt to lift it up here and then put like a pool noodle or AC uh, insulation uh, foam around the uh, edge of it to meet this so it seals which I think is a cool idea I may do that um, so just so you have forced flow so your cooling system works better I have, don't really have any issues but it's winter time here in Florida so it's nice weather but I mean I haven't had any issues, I haven't had any long trips, but with the hydraulic fan, my Humvee cools so well. So, and lower thermostat and lower 195 fan switch too, the 180 thermostat, it cools really well. As for the expense of the whole job, what I did, I think I paid like 60 bucks for my um, 3 inch or 3 8 hole drilled in them uh, lift blocks. 
and uh, the grade 8 bolts were like 50 bucks. They were expensive. And a um, little, I think the three bolts I used, two bolts maybe for the uh, tank lowering, they were, they were nothing. It was like six bucks, I believe. Um, the power steering line, that, and the new fuel hose, I think was like 60 bucks. 70 bucks, I think, for all those. And um, I think that's it. Just, again, antifreeze, and I had to change... I had to add fill fluid for my power steering and also change out my antifreeze, but you need to do that anyways. It's a good maintenance item. So it wasn't it wasn't that uh, expensive. It's a pretty cheap uh, way to do it. Um, it's not perfect, and I know, forgive me for for not having <laughs> doing a perfect job with this, and maybe um, uh, you, I know you could do it better, but I'm just giving you guys some info on what I did, and it really helped. So hopefully this can help you guys out and uh, it'll work for you guys. Okay.